Hello everyone, um, so it's Saturday on the 3rd of April and it's like 11.30 in the morning and I thought I would start a vlog for um, Invisible Cities for April. Uh, this time I'm going to do all the countries in one vlog because I have other plans I want to get on with and I thought it would be easier to just do all at once also because many of these books are really short. So the countries for April were Equatorial Guinea, Peru and Vietnam. Uh, for Equatorial Guinea I'm going to be reading La Bastarda, I don't remember the name of the author but I'll put it somewhere. Um, and then I'm going to watch Palms, Palm Trees in the Snow, which is actually a Spanish movie, I remember when it came out. Um, and it's a bit colonialist but it's the only one I could find about Equatorial Guinea, so I'm hoping that they still did a decent job with it. Um, we'll see. And I mean, then for for the food, there are so many options, like there's so many good um, Equatorian Guinean dishes. But uh, what I want to do is, uh, there is this famous fish with three sauces or something like that, that I want to make. Um, now, I'm, because I'm vegan, I want to make it with vegan fish, which I have tried before, I have a recipe for uh, fish and chips that is vegan, so I'm going to just use that fish. I don't think it's the same kind of fish that they would use, but I think that's as close as I'm gonna get. And then for Peru, I'm going to be reading Nueve Lunas um, in Spanish. And then I'm going to watch the movie Pacificum. Um, and I'm going to try to make picaronas, uh, we'll see. Uh, which is like this uh, dessert thing. Which I, I haven't made desserts uh, for this Invisible Cities a uh, very, very long time, so I, if ever. So I'm excited to make um, some dessert also because Peruvian is one of my favorite cuisines. It's so nice, they have so many things. Um, and then for Vietnam, I want to read The Mountain Sing by Nhu Phan K, something like that. Um, butchering that. And then um, I found that I think Netflix has a movie called Mother in Law that I might watch. Um, uh, and then for food, I mean, there's so, so many Vietnamese things to make as well. But um, I have a recipe for Vietnamese pizza and I also have a recipe for sticky spicy tofu. So I might make those. We will see how that goes. But yeah, that is my plans for for this month for uh, Invisible Cities. I think I'm going to start with Equatorial Guinea just because the book La Bastarda is like 90 pages so I probably will be able to finish it today. I don't have a lot of plans today. I want to... we have an appointment to go to um, a hardware store because we have to find some hardware stuff, like pipes and things, nothing interesting, but um, yeah, we have to do that, so we're going to go there, I think in an hour or so, an hour and a half, um, and then other than that, yeah, I don't have plans today, I'm also off next week, so that's gonna be really nice, um, I have some appointments, like dentist, doctor appointments kind of thing, but, um, but yeah, I don't have plans. And it's so weird for me to have holidays without going anywhere, but I needed a holiday, so I took it anyway. Um, and it's going to be chill and nice, and I will just be reading stuff. We will see how long this takes me. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go and start reading La Bastarda. Hello everyone, so it's a bit later, it's around 3 in the afternoon, and I finished uh, La Bastarda a little bit ago. And I really liked it, it's a very short book, it's like 80 pages. And it's about um, this girl, she's like 17, um, and her family situation is not really good. Um, they live in Equatorial Guinea with very strict rules of what men and women should do and stuff like that. And her grandfather is the one that is judging um, how things are going because her mom died in childbirth and her dad doesn't um, take care of her. Um, so she grew up without a real figure, that's why she's called La Bastarda, the bastard. And um, yeah, she's trying to find out who her dad is and try to find a little bit of a connection there. But at the same time she's struggling because she's in love with this other girl in her community and of course that's 
really looking look down upon and they are the family is trying to make her marry someone um and she struggles with all of that and then we have other characters that are also part of the lgbtq community um and how that affects her life and yeah i thought it was really good um also there is an afterwards at the end explaining a little bit more about the history of equatorial guinea which was also nice because i knew that the spanish had tried to colonize that part but also the the portuguese and the dutch so yeah that always makes me uncomfortable to read about because obviously as a spanish person living in the netherlands as much as i don't agree with all those things and i don't uh, want those things to be there uh, they were there and the countries i live in they have benefited from that colonization and some of the advantages i have in life are because of that colonization so it always makes me feel a bit uncomfortable reading out those things but that doesn't mean it's not important to do and i shouldn't keep doing it so yeah that's uh that's those are my thoughts on the book i would really recommend and i think that now it's still quite early but i'm a bit tired so i think maybe i'll go watch the movie and i'll make um the dish later and that will be my equatorial guinean trip for for now it's around 8 30 pm and um yeah we we had the food it was really good um the peanut sauce was really nice and i also watched the movie and i have mixed feelings about it because it's mostly from the white people's perspective of equatorial guinea when they got independence and it portrays kind of a bad image of the natives when they got independence which bother me um but it also showed and uh, basically it's a love story between a white spanish guy from huesca which is a tiny town in the middle of the pyrenees where it's always snowing and stuff and this woman from equatorial guinea um and it's kind of a forbidden love because she's not she's married and she's not supposed to be with him and also because of the people around him, he also doesn't feel like he should be doing that and kind of stuff. Um, but then we also see him and his father even like embracing the culture and appreciating the culture and the place for what they are. And I like that part. Um, but yeah, the the portrayal, I mean, it's not like the portrayal of all the white people was really good but i think that portrayal of the independence uh, warriors was not great so yeah um mixed feelings about it but uh, overall i think i enjoyed it and this is um all the equatorian guinea things that i was planning to do um i really like the book i really like the food and I was uh, I enjoyed the movie. I mean, at the end of the day, it was produced in Spain, it was not produced in Equatorial Guinea, so um, I was not expecting too much. Um, but yeah, I think what I'm going to do is relax now, and I will start with Peru tomorrow. Hello everyone. So it's Sunday. It's almost 7 p.m. and I haven't updated you this morning. I was uh, 
very lazy this morning, <laughs> but um, I just filmed my uh, weekly reads and I wanted to update you on uh, Nueve Lunas because I'm almost halfway through um, and I'm really enjoying it. So, so it's this memoir from the author that is directed to her child and in this introduction she talks about the memoir to her child because I think she wrote this quite a long time ago um, and she wanted to explain the, the current situation I guess uh, because she, she and the book basically follows her uh, on the nine months of her pregnancy of this child that's why it's called Nueve Lunas, nine months um, but then in the introduction we get to learn that this child identifies now as a non-binary trans person and also that the author herself um, has changed her status in, in this relationship because she's now in a polyamorous relationship and she has another child that is not from her but from the other woman in the polyamorous relationship. Um, so it's all very interesting um, and I am enjoying the, the book itself. It starts uh, explaining a little bit about um, each stage of pregnancy and like the status of the fetus and the status of the mother but also after that she explains things that kind of relate to that moment in her life but also back to when she was young and was growing up in, in Peru or because she moved to, to Spain afterwards and this child is being born in, in Spain um, but also some abortions that she had when she was younger and um, abusive relationships that she had when she was younger and it's all very... It, it's, it's stories that we need to hear and stories that are really interesting but at the same time it's told in such a different way. I have never seen a book that was told in such a way and I'm really enjoying this. I, I just picked it up in a whim because that was something that I could find in my library that was um, from Peru, but I'm really, really enjoying it. So yeah, I will let you know when I finish it, but so far it's really good. Hello everybody. So it's Monday afternoon. Um, I'm still on holidays. I'm still on holidays the whole next week. Um, and that feels very nice. But the weather has been super weird. It was snowing like 10 minutes ago and now it's sunny and then it gets snowing again. It's so weird, we are in April. Things are on bloom and snowing, but oh well. Um, about the books, I did finish uh, Nueve Lunas uh, last night and it was really good, I really enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, basically it was what I said, um, the collection of uh, the memories of, of this woman throughout her pregnancy and uh, when it goes closer to the end of her pregnancy she focuses more on the pregnancy itself and the delivery than the the memories that we found at the beginning, but because we already have that context, we understand her feelings better. Um, so yeah, that was really nice. I really enjoyed that one. Um, I haven't cooked the Peruvian food yet and I also want to watch the movie. I think I'm going to go watch the movie now and then I'll make the Peruvian food tonight. And in the meantime, I think I will also start um, my Vietnam book because that one is a slightly um, longer than the other two I have read for this for this vlog um, but yeah that's my update and I'll let you know later how the movie went
Wednesday morning, it's around 11.30 and I haven't updated you in a few days. I was just very sluggish for some reason. I think the weather didn't help. It was snowing somehow yesterday and the day before. And um, yeah, I have not been in the space to be reading a lot or doing a lot of these kind of things. So I think that's why I didn't update you a lot because I don't have that much to update on. Uh, but I watched the Peruvian movie Pacifico and it was a documentary about the relationship between Peruvian culture and the sea and how we should protect the sea and things like that, which was really nice. The photography is beautiful and it reminded me of when I was in Peru, which is something that I really enjoy. Peru is a country that always has a special place in my mind. I enjoyed my time there so much. Um, so yeah, that was nice. Um, and then I also made Peruvian food, so I made this sangucho, which is basically like sandwiches, um, which is something that I also ate a lot there. They had a lot of street foods like sandwiches and also these picarones that are like sweet donuts uh, kind of things, um, which were also really good. I've never done anything like that before but it was it was quite good so yeah um, I guess that means that I finished with the Peruvian stuff for this vlog uh, and I enjoyed it um, so now it's only left to do Vietnam and for Vietnam I have started the book for Vietnam um, the mountain thing um, but yeah I, I'm 25% into it um, I'm enjoying it so far it's about a, a Vietnamese family during the Vietnam War um, and it, we go also backwards a little bit to see the story of the, the family um, so yeah, that's interesting I'm also excited for uh, Vietnamese food and I don't know when I will watch a movie probably, I don't know, maybe tomorrow or the day after um, I have quite a busy day today um, I have an appointment and then some friends are coming for, for dinner um, there are a couple uh, that we regularly see um, and then tomorrow I'm visiting another friend that had a baby recently and I haven't met the baby yet so I'm going there tomorrow um, and yeah I don't know maybe Friday will be a more chill day also yesterday and today there was Champions League um, matches which was uh, interesting so yeah today there are some good ones so we'll see what happens uh, but yeah, that's that's what I have been doing. Um, I'll update you when I have anything to update. Hello everybody. So it is Friday morning. It's around 10, 11. And I haven't read much lately. Yesterday I went to my friend's house um, to paint finished painting um, their baby girl's uh, room. I think I have some some clips so I would put something or I would have already put something um, to show you a little bit. But yeah, so I didn't read much. Um, I'm not in the reading mood for some reason lately, uh, but I am trying to, to make it. Um, so yeah, I, I am about halfway through um, the mountain scene and I am enjoying it. Um, the story to me, it hasn't picked up yet that much. It's it's still we are knowing the family and the characters, which I'm fine with. Um, but the plot is not the fastest. Um, and yeah, I I am enjoying it. I'm just not reading a lot lately. I hope I can finish it uh, in the last couple of days or so. Um, I also plan to cook some Vietnamese food tonight and maybe watch the movie, I don't know. I, I don't think there is football matches today, so I might just watch the movie that I was speaking for for Vietnam. But yeah, that's my update. I'm sorry I'm not updating this vlog so much and I'm sorry I'm not reading so much, but um, yeah, I will, I will keep you updated when I finish um, something.
everyone. So I just wanted to wrap up this vlog because I finished um, the mountain scene yesterday. And honestly, I think I didn't, I was not in the right mind space to, to read it because um, I felt very meh about it. I know that a lot of people love this book and it's very emotional because there's a lot of hardship related to the Vietnam War. But for me, it was just like one more family story. Um, so yeah, it didn't have the impact. I think also because it jumps in time a lot, back and forth, back and forth, so that every time it jumped, it took me out of the story. Um, so yeah, sadly I was not loving this book, uh, but I know a lot of people do, so don't get put off by me. Um, yeah, that sometimes happens. Um, but yeah, um, overall I enjoyed my Invisible Cities for this month. Um, also, I didn't watch the movie for Vietnam. I couldn't find it in Netflix. I don't know, I always look for these movies in Netflix and it says, yeah, we have it and then it disappears when I want to watch it. But um, yeah, other than that, I enjoyed my time. And um, I hope you enjoyed this vlog too. Let me know what you have read this month for Invisible Cities. Uh, if you have read any of these books, uh, if you like them, let me know. Um, and until next video, bye!